Hey, what's up everybody? Doran Aldana here coming at you with another kick-ass episode of the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. And today we have a special treat for you and you're going to be able to hear from the one, the only Jed Barker. You're going to hear how Jed went from literally two deals a month in January to being on track to do 20 deals in August. And he's been doing 10 deals a month for the last four months. It took him literally two months to 5X his business. I call that going stratospheric and doing it in a hurry. So we're going to just uh, peel back the curtain and shed some light on his story. I know that for many of you, this will be very inspirational, motivational, educational for you. So strap on your seatbelt, get ready. This is going to be a heck of a lot of fun and very insightful. So tune in and let's get this thing rocking, guys. Thank you so much, Jed, for being with us. Super stoked you're here and can't wait to have you share your story. Thanks, man. Thanks for inviting me uh, to come on. I uh, haven't been on a podcast before. Or there I don't you know go. Podcast this is more of like a Facebook Live kind of thing. So. Yeah, well, you get to do a, a two for one, a two for today and uh, kind of cool to be able to break you in uh, on this. And, you know, it's uh, going to be real raw and rugged just straight from the heart telling your story and so why don't we just start off with uh a little bit of your origin story as it relates to you know where are you uh located and how long you've been in the business and what inspired you to get into the business why don't we start there sure man um i'm in a little town called greenville south carolina down here in the south uh, beautiful weather right now we love it i'm not a native i've been here five years and I've been in the South for about seven or eight years, stuff like that. So beautiful place. Moved out, moved out to this area for business, uh, not for mortgage business, for a totally different business about maybe eight years ago. And um, the question is, uh, a little, that's I guess that's where I'm from. That's where I live right now and everything like beautiful that. Beautiful part of the world. I was actually there down in uh, Southern Cal South Carolina a year and a half ago in Hilton Head. And what a magical, beautiful part of the world. Those big heritage trees with the moss draping off their branches. It's, it's absolutely exquisite, beautiful spot. So yeah, we don't have to worry about you suffering down there in South Carolina, beautiful spot to be. Absolutely. And how long have you been in the mortgage business for? Um, well, I guess my story there is probably different than most. I've, uh, I've been a licensed loan officer for about two point, maybe six years, like two and a half years. Okay. Just about that, that's about it. Maybe just over two and a half years. And um, I uh, started my own brokerage as a mortgage broker's officer about six months ago. So that's probably pretty quick for most, but that's the way I like to roll. I love it. Go big or go home. And obviously you had that intention from the very beginnings. Um, and when we met, you'd been in the game for about two years. So you're right on that cusp of taking the leap into having your own brokerage and being in it to win it and wanting to be equipped. Um, so you're still relatively green and, and fresh to the industry. I mean, two and a half years is uh, not a whole lot of time. For those of you who've been in the business for 5, 10, 15, 20 plus years, two and a half years, I mean, that goes like nothing. And a lot of people, truth be told, statistically speaking, get chewed up and spat out within the first two years. And those who manage to survive only make 75, 70K. And that's before tax, not after tax. So you've certainly uh, risen above the norm in terms of the statistics and the odds stacked against you. But uh, it always it wasn't always that way. So why don't we rewind the tape and go back? Um, but before we even go back, maybe you can share a little bit about what was the inspiration to getting into the business to begin with? What what got you doing this versus something else? Sure. Um, I, you know, that needs to take me back maybe when I was about 27. Um, I was working at a job uh, in like a call center. Okay. And uh, I was managing like a sales team in a call center uh, full time. Uh, we believed in what we did. It was very, we were selling, we were actually selling university, uh, but it was outbound sales. So a lot of fun. Uh, I hated it. Uh, for the first down. I hated it for <laughs> a couple months. Um, and then I decided I was either going to win it or I was going to, I was going to take off. And um, I was at a point I needed to win. So I decided to stick it out. I stayed there for four years. Learned a lot about being successful, but decided it wasn't my game. So I started my own business at 27 in the home security world. Um, I ran that for 13 years and about 12, about 11 years into it. So almost three years ago now, maybe 12 years into it, three years ago now, I decided I wanted to do something that would give me more scalability. I could make a lot more income. I had been making um, a decent income for my family, probably, uh, you know, averaging a couple hundred grand a year, but 
I, I didn't want to grow anymore. I was sort of burnt out from, from mm -hmm. security. I did my mm -hmm. first five years in home security, knocking doors full time, just knocking doors, selling alarm systems. That's doing uh, it the hard way. Yeah, man. It taught me a lot, though. And uh, also training uh, sales teams on how to go out and knock doors and uh, managing technicians on how to install alarms and all, all kinds of stuff. So I just uh, I, I grew out of love with that business. And I met a gentleman who was um, working all by himself with no staff, uh, making about a million bucks a year but as a mortgage broker. And he interested me. Um, I met him at my church and uh, he, him and I became friends. And he said, you should get your loan officer license and work for me. And I said, I don't want to work for you. <laughs> <laughs> but I like the idea of making a million dollars a year. Let's talk. <laughs> I, said, I, will, I, I think I will get my loan officer license, but I didn't do it for about a year because I was super busy running my company. But I decided I'd take the leap and I did it. I, I, I got my loan officer license and I, from, this is sort of strange for some, but for my first uh, almost two, a year and a half to two years of having my license, I was completely part time just running my own company, only doing maybe 12, 13 deals a year. Um, for those first little bit, um, just get my feet wet, understanding the business, maybe spending 10 to 12 hours a week on it. Um, and then as soon as I sold my alarm business, I said I needed to my own, open up my own brokerage. So I've, I've been doing this full time for about eight months uh, and part time, for about, part time for about 19, 18 months before that. Something like that. All right. So, so then I really have the possibility and scalability and the ease. I, this business seems to be so much easier than running a home security business. So. Yeah, especially when you compare it to knocking on doors. My goodness, that's yeah. that's definitely slugging through the mud with concrete blocks on your feet, doing it the hard way. But you're right, built a lot of grit, a lot of muscle, a lot of uh, skill that obviously you were able to bring to this business. Um, obviously, there was still much to be wanted in results prior to us meeting, which is why you reached out for help. But um, here you are now launching into your brokerage, your own shop uh, on 100% commission, you eat what you kill, no safety net. Talk about taking a leap from the nest and growing wings on the way down, right? And now you're on full time, no more of this transition stuff dabbling, now you're full time. Tell me about the experience going through the day-to-day -day minutia and fears and challenges and struggles of trying to get your business off the ground, knowing that you eat what you kill, no safety net, 100% commission, and you're called to be provider for your family, you got wife and kids, and you have no shortage of them too. Tell, tell uh, the audience a little bit about the context of you as uh, daddy, husband, and provider. Uh, tell us about you know how many kids you got and what's the situation there. Sure. Um, I'm a family man. I've always believed in families. It's probably the most important thing in my life. Um, I started really, very young, I think, for the most people. I uh, got married at 21. My wife was 18. So we're just a little two, two kids. She's a teenager, and I'm, I'm just barely not a teenager. <laughs> right. Um, we've had six kids since we've been married for 20 years. Woo! Talk, talk about in it to win it with six blowtorches under your buns. Before yeah. you had six kids, success was optional. Now it's freaking mandatory, right? <laughs> yeah. Family's very important to me. My kids are important, um, everything like that. Um, you know, when I got into the business, I got into it because I saw opportunity. I saw scalability and I saw, um, really, that's the biggest reason, scalability and opportunity um, to take my, my financial success to the next level and to have a product I could be really proud of. Um, I sell an alarm systems for 12, 13 years. I was proud of that product, but not like I am, not like I am changing lives. And I really think we change lives when we help people get loans, especially mm -hmm. the ones that are, are not having a good time getting them with other people or maybe getting thrown to the curb and, and really taking them through the process. So I think that's enjoyable. Um, but you know, my first, uh, 16 to 17 months doing this, I guess I didn't really struggle during because it was my part-time income and I didn't right. really get time. Um, I probably made about, you know, $60,000 a year that first year doing this part time. And it was just extra money that I invested back into my, my business to get started. So I didn't have a lot of struggles there and I wasn't really actively pursuing like how to grow the business. But I said, this is, this is foolishness. It's time, time to make a difference in my life. Mm -hmm. So I, I did sell my alarm company uh, for a little bit of a profit. I paid off any alarm debts I had and I was left with a, enough money not to worry um, about it. And I immediately went um, cold turkey with with making income, um, you know, out of my other company. And it was a little bit of a mind game because I went from having an income to having not any income. Because when I actually sold the alarm business and I got start and I was just a loan officer with this company I was with, 
I didn't have a pipeline at all. I, I didn't have uh, any realtors really that, that gave me any much business at all. Um, I was part time. They didn't really want to talk to me. I don't, you know, that much. I didn't try uh, to talk to them as much. But I, one thing I did during that time is I learned, uh, I learned all about products. I learned how to, I learned how to be, you know, talk with shop properly. And I already knew how to sell um, another product, so I knew I could do this. Um, but you know, even at that, my first six months uh, out of the loan officer, out of that business into this, I only did about you know ten deals or something like that, and. It, it, you know, I was maybe going negative about three grand a month, four grand a month on my bills, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, but there wasn't any turning back. I knew this was going to be a winner. Um, I had gone through a couple programs like your kind of program that taught me a lot. And I was making traction, quite a bit of traction, um, but I hadn't popped yet. And a lot of people might give up at that point, you know. <laughs> right. Kind of, yeah. I'm not making a lot of traction. And anyway. Yeah. Especially when you're bleeding by two or three K a month, you know, that's, that's some real stress for a lot of people. Let's be real. When you've got six kids to feed and you're called to be provider and you're bleeding by two or three K a month, that's, that's some real heat on your, your buns to really step up and do what it takes to win. And so here you are now, I think it was January 8th, if my recollection serves me accurately, that uh, we met prior to that based on the notes I have from our first conversation, you're averaging about just over two deals a month. I think it was like 2.2 deals a month. Uh, and you were, like you say, make, starting to make some traction, but you're still kind of banging your head against that glass ceiling, spinning your wheels. You hadn't popped, as you say. And tell us about what was your biggest struggle or fear or worry in that season prior to, as you call it, popping, um, when you were putting in the effort, you're, you know, you're grinding, you're hustling, and you're just not seeing the traction yet. What was your, your biggest fear or your biggest uh, stress at that point that for you had you reaching out for help? When I reached out to you, Dorn, I think my biggest fear was not, um, not finding my stride in time where I would get more stressed out. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, not popping in time, I guess. Um, I wasn't overly consumed with it. I mean, I've been a self-employed guy for, for almost all my dot life and not getting a paycheck. So I understood it, you know, and everything like that. Mm -hmm. um, so that, but that was a little bit of a, a fear, just not having that. And really my biggest head bang against the wall is not finding, not finding um, something I believed in um, to approach partners with properly. Um, I had gone out to other programs and say, Hey, what's your hook? And I, you know, they all teach about a hook and you know, what's your hook to get this? What's the hook to get that? And some of them even teach what, what you teach. And I don't think it's bad stuff, but, um, I, I wasn't believing the hook enough. So I wasn't doing a good job at, mm -hmm. at promoting myself, if that makes sense. Yeah. And it's, it's one thing to believe in yourself. There's no doubt you had that belief because you had built the identity as a winner already in your different roles and uh, your previous successes in your career. So you had that intact, but it's one thing to know you're a winner, know you're a champion, know you have what it takes. There's a whole other thing when you're showing up to the gunfight with a butter knife, unequipped and ill-equipped, you're like, man, I need to really up my game when it comes to having that value proposition. Because once you start to reach out to them and they don't give you the time of the day after the 10th, 20th time, you start to realize, hmm, this ain't working. Something needs to change. So obviously that was one of the reasons why you reached out for help. Tell us about some of the things you did prior to uh, coming to Planet Prosper and rolling with, uh, with Dr. D and having other programs you've worked with, whether it be, you know, programs that are well known or more obscure. Tell us about some of those, what I would call conventional methods that are often taught out there that you invested time or money in that didn't work such that you reached out to get more effective help from what we bring to the table. Tell us about that. Yeah. I, th I think the programs I was involved with um, actually had a lot of great education resources and they taught, uh, taught a lot of good principles. Your principles are extremely good and they very helped me out. And I think a lot of those a lot of those were the same principles. Um, I'm building my business right now on realtor relationships and financial mm -hmm. relationships and CPA relationships and such like that. Um, and I'm not building it on, um, you know, advertising through like bringing in my own leads. I'm just not doing that, that method. And I know that some people teach that not, but I'm just haven't found it's not my, my, my thing. Right. Right. Um, 
But what I was finding is through the method of contacting realtors through cold calling, I didn't like it that much. Um, not that I was used to knocking on doors for a living, so I know how to do it. <laughs> right. I, don't really, I don't really like rejection as much and stuff like that. You know, and it, 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 every day I was out door knocking, selling alarm systems. I, every day I started off, I didn't like, I didn't like it. So right, if you like cold calling, there's something wrong with you. You're I a sick puppy. You're, you're a sick right? puppy, right? right. <laughs> kind of thing. So, you know, I, I, um, I hadn't really thought about you know some of the ways to contact through the text automated, you know, until until you. Uh, but the, the theory behind it is the same, contacting, you know, people you want to be partners with and, and showing them that you're a valuable resource. So I had already been doing that full time for probably about, you know, six months, right? From the time I, I let go of my full time company and started my own thing, I'd been really pushing full time, not, not as good as I should have because it was all cold calling. So I'd have a little run at it and then I'd be like, oh, that sort of is not that fun, you know, and then I'd meet, I'd go out and meet with like 10 realtors in a week and sit down. And it'd be all fun talking to them. And then it would be like, oh, what's going to happen from this? You know, that kind of thing. And not, right. not a lot of traction there. Um, a little bit, not a lot. Um, Lots so of empty promises and a lot of, you know, time whining and dining, but not necessarily creating solid alliances. Yeah. And I, right. had, I, had, a, I had a couple, you know, um, that that's how I got, you know, some of the business I was doing. And I had relationships from my past business that were doing loans with me and stuff like that. So I had some. Um, but not not in a way that that had popped at the point where I was you know finding I'd, I'd started to make traction and that's where I feel I'm at right now I'm I'm sort of at the, the I'm at this part of the mountain so high for me and I'm just like starting I feel like a little baby in this business right I really do I'm, my success level I think is like right here compared to where it's going to be as I continue to just practice because I'm so new yeah. Um, but that's, but that's also the magic. That's also the magic of thinking big. You know, most people they get to ten deals a month and they they think that's utopia. You know, like I've arrived. You know, like you know I've already hit my dream. Now I can just coast. But you know, that's one of the quintessential traits of champions and winners, and uh, you know, the leaders of all industry is that they have big dreams and big goals, and they can get to what most people would consider great good. But they don't want to settle for good. They want to go for great. That's why I often say that good is always the mortal enemy of great. Because that's when you start to sit on your laurels and get complacent and start growing moss and stagnating instead of expanding and growing. So I love that about you. That's one of the reasons why you're successful. You think big and you also execute big and take massive action. And you've, that's one of the reasons why you've been getting massive results. So you tried the cold calling. You tried the just, you know, uh, wine and dine the realtors. You were getting some traction, but you're noticing it wasn't working like you wanted it to or you needed it to. And here we are now on a breakthrough call with Doran Aldana, trying to find out what he can do to help you create a breakthrough. Tell us about one of the, if not perhaps the secret motivation that maybe no one else knew but you. Maybe maybe your wife knew uh, if you had pillow talk that had you really share your heart. But you know, chances are it's something that was really uh, in your own heart that was your real driving force on why you needed to step your get step up your game and not settle for the kind of results you're getting uh, when it comes to making a bold intelligent strategic investment in yourself and your business what was the the nerve if you will that had you say screw it let's do it i'm more committed to my dream than my comfort zone and to push forward and to uh to make that uh that bold move in investing in yourself what was that motivation for you uh, that's a good question. So I, you know, my first conversation with you, Doran, you're, you're motivational, right? So you talk, you, you talk good, you got good things you say and everything like that. But I'm a sales guy and, and I, I, I didn't immediately think, oh, Doran's such a great person. I, I, it's like, oh, Doran's trying to sell me something. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to listen. So. Yeah. And 19 times out of 19 times out of 20, that's the truth. We, we, we presume and assume the person just has commission breath halitosis and they just want to grab our wallets. They couldn't give a rip about us. They just want to make a sale. But obviously, you know, after we got through our breakthrough call, you, you got the real heart of what my true intention is, which is not to sell you, but to change your life if you're committed. But anyways, not to derail you, let's come back to yeah. your experience and your, your secret motivation. Absolutely. So I just, uh, you know, spent probably as much on a couple other programs that taught me some great things. It's all education. I don't think anything I've ever signed up for in this business has been a waste of money. It's all been educational. It's taught me stuff. So I probably just spent another like 10 grand uh, before that last six months just educating myself and, and motivating myself. 
And then I was going to go to yours. I was like, ah, I don't want to spend any more money because it's going to be the same. <laughs> right. But you're motivational. And, I, you know, I was like, yeah, let's do this. So um, I, I had the funds to do it. I did it. Um, it wasn't I was going way out on the limb, although I hate wasting money in business. Um, but my motivation really behind it um, at that point was my belief in myself. Um, and I not having at that point, I knew I knew a lot, but I needed more. I needed something else a little bit more. Uh, I didn't know what it was. And your program has a lot to offer. And, you know, I haven't used all of it. It's got so much stuff inside of it. I've only used probably like 15 percent of it so far. OK, um, but what I've used, the 15 percent I've used has been my pop. Right. So if I take everything I did and you add your 15 percent, that's popped me into a new level, um, which I'm happy about. And there's like 80 other percent of what you have in there. I haven't touched yet. So maybe I'll get to that. I'm not sure. We'll see about it. Um, but my motivation was 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 my own personal desire just just to be as su successful for myself and my family. Um, one of the things that you have on your motivation um, script that, that I started reading every day was um, I think it said I'm entitled, not entitled, that's the wrong word, but um, I had it in my mind here. Now it's gone. It's my birthright, right? So, you know, financial, oh, freedom, yeah. financial freedom is my birthright. I am committed to complete and total financial freedom with the means of work because I choose to, not because I have to, doing what I love and loving what I do, right? I do this yes. because it serves my God, myself, my family at the highest level, right? I started reading those words every day mm. with, with some others, and it just got into my brain. That's my Ooh. motivation. Right. That's my motivation. I'm committed to myself because I believe God's committed to me and my family's committed to me. So I have to do it. And that is probably if I say everything I've, I've, I've learned in this, besides the contact method that's really worked well for me and more, mo, more um, confidence is, is yeah. um, even having those three meetings with your personal um, motivation, your lady. What's her name? <laughs> Coach Ashley, our peak performance yeah. results coach. Yes. Absolutely. I never did a coaching session with someone like Ashley, who was nothing to do about business, nothing to do about money, all to do about you and letting you take it. And so we had we had more of a spiritual conversation, but it was about intention and beliefs. And that probably did more for me than any business book I read. Right. Intention and beliefs. So yes. that, that's my motivation was was my belief that I, I, de I deserve it because I was born with the desire to have it and God wants me to have it. That's, that was my, my full, my, my full motivation. You know? Wow. That's amazing. When you shared that, I literally got goosebumps because I, I just, I got so, so heart connected to the power of aligning your beliefs with your divine creator. And it reminds me of a distinction I learned recently that the word desire, these desires we have in our heart, when they're not base desires, but desires that having you expand into the fullness of who you're called to be, which ultimately always have a ripple effect to serve others, to make a difference in other people's lives. The word desire, the Latin root of desire is of the father, of creator, of source, which means God gave you that desire because he wants to work in you and through you to fulfill his purpose in your life. And so that desire is a divine desire that wants to be fulfilled, but it doesn't happen in your own accord. It happens when you align your beliefs with your divine purpose. And so when you shared those words and you shared them with passion, I literally got goosebumps because I just felt that alignment, right? Your beliefs aligning with your calling and your purpose. So powerful. And it's like, that's just that little, that little hinge that sw swings open big doors right. to your purpose and your calling. It's like the difference between holding fast at 211 degrees and being just on the verge of boiling point. You can't power a locomotive. You can't do anything but have hot water. But that one additional degree, as you would say, popped you to that next level where you stepped into your power, stepped into your calling, stepped into your greatness. And all of a sudden, now the floodgates unleash. And it, it might seem like a small thing, just one degree, but it made all the difference in the world. Now you can power the locomotive. So super, super awesome. And so now here we are, January 8th, 2020. You're on a breakthrough call and it's getting real because now all of a sudden it's like, okay, I want to make champion money. All of a sudden I realize it's not going to come from a chump level investment. 
And uh, here you are about to pull the trigger. You've got all these natural inborn inclinations towards, frankly, playing it safe. This is called human nature, right? Playing it safe, deliberation, procrastination. Uh, I'll wait till tomorrow, manana. I don't want to waste money, et cetera, et cetera. So here you are now on the verge of making a bold, intelligent, strategic investment in yourself and your dream. Tell us about that moment of pulling the trigger for you. What had you uh, decide to say, screw it, let's do it? If there was one thing that had you push through your comfort zone, push through your fear, your skepticism, your resignation and procrastination and decide now's the time, what was it for you? Maybe just the thought if, if I if I don't do this and invest in it, then maybe things maybe I don't get that extra thing I need, but maybe I just sort of struggle for another six months or another three mm -hmm. months. Um, maybe there's something else out there. But if I do it, what if it is that one thing that I need? What if it has a couple things that will help me? Because you know, the little amount you invest in a program like this is nothing compared to the money you make, right? So it's just all right. small investments. So I said I have way more to lose, right? By not doing something than doing it. So I got to do it. And that's probably helped me be successful in other business, my other business too. I mean, I got, you got way more to lose if you don't yeah. do something, right? Yes. It's, a, it's a good thing, right? <laughs> and so. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, most, uh, most people, if they don't have their mindset dialed in, if they're in scarcity mode and they're coming from their weaker self, their fear self, they'll look at the risk of moving forward. But champions, winners, people who are expanding into their dream, who are more committed to their dream than their comfort zone, are more afraid of what would it cost me if I don't expand into my dream? And I settle for second best and I stagnate and I keep spinning my wheels. It's more risky not to move forward than to move forward. It's more risky to settle than it is to say, screw it, let's do it and step into my dream and soar. So you're certainly no exception in that. You you obviously had a bigger pull towards expansion than you did towards self-preservation. And I think I know that that's a quintessential trait of the successful is that they're more committed to their dream than their comfort zone, expanding versus contracting. Let's talk about after you took the plunge and here you are now on Planet Prosper, rolling with Dorn and his crew, and you're learning a new method of thinking a new method of dialing in your daily routine, a new method of programming yourself to think from victory and feel from victory, a new method of approaching these uh, agents, a new method of even you know, discerning which agency you should be going after and which ones you shouldn't and how to actually get them pre-cooked and pre-tenderized and pre-sold on you, at least receptive to you before you even talk to them. But all this is new for you. So naturally, there's going to be some skepticism in the mix. Tell us about this natural skepticism that you had as you launched into engaging in this process. Um, yeah, good. So skepticism, that's the last thing you said there. I was, you know, I, I, I will say, you know, a bit skeptic about, um, about it, but, uh, you know, that, that's not really what made me um, successful is my skepticism, right? So I was, I, my skepticism was like right here compared, compared to what I want, right? Like the way mm. I'm here. So I'm, I'm more concerned at this point with not being a skeptic anymore. And I'm more concerned with what do I do? So I immediately, after I signed up with your program, um, I immediately, I mean, I watched all your stuff, but I immediately changed my morning routine around and I started getting up uh, quite a bit earlier. I started, you know, really focusing on my workouts in the morning, like my routines, not that I have lots of muscles because I don't, but I started working out of my routine on that. And I started making sure every day I was following, you know, some of the guidelines that you have in your program and the other ones I did as far as, as far as my mental attitude and my reach out and who am I contacting. I was a little bit concerned about contacting, you know, certain realtors up to that point. Um, but immediately after signing up for your program, I went out and built a, a list of every agent in my city. Um, I got about 3,800 of them. I got all 3,800 agents in a list. I found all their phone numbers and all of their emails, and I chose the top the top thousand to work on because those are the ones that are doing any business. The rest of them weren't doing much business. And so far, I've only I've only actually put about a hundred of them in your system. So, oh. okay, <laughs> like that. Um, so I have a lot of obviously. There's a lot of growth room there to, to work on, and I've continued to do that. And and you need to continue to do that. So, um, 
one thing I did get you know, right from your program is the way to contact. Um, I like I like contacting through your method more than just the cold call. Um, that was a lot funner. Um, I I tried out some of the methods for like the advertising on the Facebook and all that, but I found you know I like posting on Facebook, but I don't like dealing with Facebook leads, so I don't do any Facebook posting mm -hmm. and I don't do any Facebook leads um, and I you know anything like that. And I, I I tried Google out and I didn't really like the leads I got from that. Not that they're no good, but it just wasn't my style. So I said, hey, I'm gonna and to bring it down just focus on one thing i'm just going to focus on my relationships and my hook is gonna my hook can be what you teach but my hook at the end of the day is really i i, I just want to be a really good loan officer to these people and i'm going to contact them uh, quite a bit with updates and i'm going to contact them every week with important information that they can find useful and eventually they're going to want to do a loan with me and i found that it's true they do want to work with you especially when they see that you're doing a good job yeah so, Absolutely. Well, there's a lot in there. You know, first thing is you had skepticism. Uh, you acknowledge that, but you realize that you haven't won through your career by playing to that skepticism, but rather to hearing the, hear the voice and say, thanks for sharing and then recommit to the goal and recommit to emptying your cup so that your coach can fill it with your dream. And that's what you did. You know, you were malleable, humble, receptive and all in, in it to win it. And you know you weren't pulling punches. You were all in right from the start. Have you completed everything in the program? No, of course not. Um, at the same time, what you have done is created stratospheric results. I mean, you don't you don't go from two loans a month to ten plus loans a month to you know in August you're on track to do twenty loans. You don't get that kind of result by being a stick stick in the mud and dragging your feet and whining, simply complaining and explaining all the reasons why you can't. You focus on why you can and why you will, and then you get to work. And that was certainly you. That was the embodiment of how you showed up every single day. And the other interesting thing is, you know, you you talked about, you tried the Facebook, you tried the Google AdWords, you realized that's not congruent and in alignment with who you are and how you want to roll. What's great about that is you're being true to you. You're being true to your values and how you want to have your business. Because at the end of the day, this business is about serving your goals, your dreams, your lifestyle, the impact you want to make, the fulfillment and fun you want to have. So that's the great thing about you too, is instead of saying, oh, this doesn't work, that doesn't work, you say, oh, I'm going to find out what does work. How can I make it work? And that again is the quintessential trait of success. Instead of just focusing myopically on how this doesn't work and this doesn't work, you shift your focus to how can I make it work? And you got it dialed into gel it, massage it, and smooth it out to make it work for you. And the other really interesting thing about it, we often say in uh, the, the uh, sales world is that we uh, sell people what they want and we give them what they need, right? So um, to be at risk of kind of peeling back the curtain and probably sharing a little more than I probably should on a live uh, Facebook Live that goes public to the world. Um, in our world, we sell people what they want, which is lead generation and marketing systems and campaigns and a proven plan to attract top producing realtors to make you their exclusive and to flip the script so that the realtor needs you more than you need them. Those are all hot buttons, right? They all roll off my tongue because this is what we talk about all day, every day. So we give them what they want. We sell them what they want, but what they really need is to get their head on straight, right? Because it doesn't matter how many tools you put in the toolbox. If you got a leaky toolbox, you got a problem, right? And so that was one of those uh, game changing shifts for you that you really dove into. And that's one of the reasons why you had such massive results is because the 99% the of success is the mindset work. And the, the remaining 1% is the tools, the strategies and the campaigns. So right. the thing about you, Jed, is you dialed into the 99% right from the start. And you were like a dog on a freaking bone with that. And that's why you've seen such tremendous results. So. The cool thing about that is now you've applied that to your agents. You give them what they, you sell them what they want, help with their marketing, you know, these various different unique value things that you dangle as a carrot. You sell them what they want, but then you give them what they need, which is a rock star loan officer who shows up not just a, as a, a mortgage hawker, but as a true partner who adds unique value, who delivers excellence and helps them get what they want, which is closing deals, making commissions, giving a first-class, world-class, five-star experience. Everyone's happy, right? So you sell them what they want, you yeah. give them what they need, right? <laughs> it's funny that you put it that way, but that's there's a lot of truth to that. Um, realtors, they they think they want they think they they, they want a, a mortgage guy who can get them leads, and they think they want all this, but what they really want is someone 
who can be a true partner with them on getting deals closed on time efficiently and making sure clients always come back to them. Yeah. And that's why we do both. We, we, get, we can deliver, we can get, deliver kick-ass marketing campaigns. We can help them resurrect dev leads and hot for what you got leads. We can help them get five-star reviews on Google using an automated system. We can help them convert more of their open house leads into hot for what you got qualified buyers. We can help them with that stuff. That's a big part of what we bring to the table. We have a full quiver of that. So we can absolutely deliver on that. But what they really want is those fundamentals. And most loan officers don't even deliver on the fundamentals. They don't even deliver on the basics, let alone, let alone the exotics. Yeah. In the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. So it doesn't take much to separate you from the pack, right? <laughs> Once you know how to actually make that overture and actually get in front of these people and to be able to bring your pleasing personality and your powerful proposition to the table, which you were successfully able to do. So here we are now, uh, let's see, it's uh, July. So we're seven months into this journey. Tell us about the results you've gotten since then. I've alluded to them. You know, you started at two deals a month. You've the last four months, it's been 10 plus deals a month. Tell us, unpack the results for you in terms of uh, the results you're most excited about that this uh, last seven months of using our systems has helped you produce in your business. Yeah. But think about that. My most excited, my most excited thing I have right now about my business is that I, I feel it's just this infant business and, and we're growing and we have so much potential. So um, every day now, because of where I've come from when I met you to now, I'm getting so many organic opportunities to talk to new partners that I don't solicit. So imagine like this month is gonna be awesome for me. I have like, I have 15 deals in underwriting for August and, and I'm gonna pick up some more. And that's probably at least maybe 12 or 13 realtors I have no relationship with at all um, wow. that I need to show how good of a job I do through staying in contact with them, through using assistance to contact them, through making them feel like I'm working as their partner, even though they don't know me, they're going to feel I'm a partner of theirs, even mm -hmm. as a seller's agent. And by the end of that transaction, most of them are going to want to get to know me better. And I believe that because I've seen that. And that's how... I only had to use the even the text out system for about two months before I had enough deals that I was just talking to people who were doing business with me. And now I should probably keep it up more, but I haven't done it in the last month because I, I just haven't felt the need uh, right. because, of, because of the new connections I'm making. And so that's what's most exciting to me about my business right now is seeing exponentially getting in front of people that I'm not calling up there or even texting saying, hey, will you do business with me? I'm saying, hey, we just did business together. How would you think about it? Oh, you like it. Why don't we talk? And then putting them on a campaign that I just stay in front of them long enough that they're going to want to you know, talk to me, at least even ask me a question. Hey, I got a, I got a, a, a buyer or a seller that doesn't know how to answer the question. Can you answer for me, Jeff? Because a lot of my relationships start off with people calling me saying, hey, can you, can you answer this for me? Not even a loan of mine. Just, just ask me a question. I'm like, yeah, sure. I'll get it for you. And then right. eventually. Eventually, they're like this, 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 this young, this kid. I'm not a kid anymore. I'm 40, but I feel like it. <laughs> you're a kid in the business, but you're no kid. <laughs> this kid that had, you know, I answered my quick question quick, and he always kept me up to date. I, I want to do business. So that's the most exciting thing for me right now is doing such a good job for the seller's agents and my buyer and, and my buyer's agents I work with that even the ones that don't know me want to get to know me, and that, that's exciting for me because now it just can grow from there without me having to. Do so much of what I don't like is, is is that, hey, do you want to do business with me? I don't like that as much. But hey, we just did business. Do you want to talk about it? I like that, right. that a lot better. But you gotta you yeah. got you gotta start somewhere, right? Absolutely. You have to start with the, the stuff that's a little more uncomfortable and you're or you're never gonna get to what's what's fun, you know, at the end of the day, kind of thing. So you Absolutely. Gotta, you gotta do the uncomfortable and get to fun, I think. Yeah. A good 80 plus percent of the fuel going from A to Z in an airplane is burned just get off, getting off the runway, right? Yeah. That's where you're burning most of the fuel. But once you get into the jet stream, you can ease off and now you can just put it on cruise control. So what's great about your situation is you had a system to be able to get out of having to do the heavy lifting of the conventional grinding methods of cold calling so that you can get to having those meaningful conversations without having the resignation and resistance and rejection that so often clutters the space with a normal cold calling uh, overture, that's what you're gonna be facing. A high wall of that resistance is gonna be there every single time. So we remove that 
we get you in front of lots of realtors with the words that work, with the right realtors with the words that work. We give you the right questions to ask so you identify their pain points, their challenges, what keeps them up, uh, up at night. You're able to cultivate the relationship so there's this wow experience. And then of course, the rest takes care of itself. You know, your, your ability to deliver value, your ability to answer questions with an adeptness, with a confidence, with a passion, and just your desire to show up fully and bring your best and do your best is a big part of why you're successful. You know, great marketing can only do so much. If you suck and you have, and you have great marketing, all you're doing is just accelerating the speed at which the world finds out you suck. So that's not gonna help much if you don't have that excellence to bring to the table. You have that. So it made it easy for us to support you to really create a breakthrough because you were already primed and ready with the commitment to excellence and your heart connection to serve people. You said even earlier in the interview that you know you truly believe that you change lives. You're not making that up. That's not just some cliche line. You, I know you believe that to your core. And that's one of the reasons why you're successful. I've often said, said that if you want to multiply your profits, first, you got to multiply your connection to purpose. You got to get yourself heart connected to the fact that what you do matters and it makes a real difference in people's lives. When you get heart connected to the fact that these are real human beings. And in many cases, they're suffering, suffering with real problems, real challenges, real fears that keep them up at night. And you as the problem solver get to liberate them from that plight into their dream, the dream of owning a home, the dream of not having that financial stress, whatever the case is. And so I don't want people to overlook that. I want to shine a light on that because that's one of the keys to your success. It's allowed you to not just be successful in closing loans, but be successful in attracting a stable of rock star agents who believe in you because you don't, you, you're not a faker. You're not just talking the talk. You walk the talk. So super proud of how you show up in that respect because that's a key part of what makes you successful, not just as a mortgage professional, but as a leader, as a, as a daddy, as a husband. And, you know, that's a big part of your legacy. And, uh, you know, I, I salute that in you, brother. That is a big part of who you are and I'm hats off to you, brother. That's, that's, uh, one of the things that I believe each and every person who believes in a creator and has a heart connection of faith to their creator when they're living by faith, through faith, in faith, that's just inextricably linked with what it means to walk by faith and to live a faith-filled life, to serve humanity, to make a difference for other people. And you're living that. So I love how you live aligned with that value, brother. Super respect that. Awesome. So where are you now? Can I mention one thing? Sure. I just want to say, um, I think what's really helped me to realize is that I have two clients. I have borrowers who are my clients and I have realtors and other other people are my clients. And I, I when you said change lives, I, I really feel I can change lives of like real estate agents and, and, and stuff like that through association. So through associating with me, and that's not to build me up saying I'm such a great person or anything like that, but through my association and the way I run my business, I believe I can help them change their families' lives. Um, because not every realtor I've decided to work with is, is, is like your rock star realtor, right? I have a lot of realtors I'm working with right now who, who are just really good people, but they're, they're struggling to make you know, 70, dollars $60,000, $70, $80,000 a year, and it's not enough for their families, but they're getting going. And I feel my association is popping them up. I've seen it pop them up. So I do feel like I, I'm even more excited about helping change partners' lives. Clients' lives is really awesome too because it's, it's fun to get, like people say, Help me into a home. It's such an important thing in our lives. So then that's awesome. And I take 100% responsibility for making sure loans close. Like no one else is responsible but me. There's ton, there's like 20 people involved on this whole thing, but I'm the only one responsible. That's why I run my business. But changing the lives of them. So that helped me with your program is believing that I can change lives in real estate agents. And that goes back to the, the morning routine that you, you taught me at that reading. I am changing realtors' lives, right? I, I can't. That helps me reach out to them because now I'm not reaching out with from an attitude of, of need, I'm reaching out with an attitude of give. I want to give you something. I want to I want to teach you things. I want to share things with you. I want to change your life. And it doesn't come out exactly like that because that might sound yeah. like too, too too like stupid or cocky or stupid. But that's how I feel. I am going to help you change your life. Um, and I want to say your programs flip my mind. And I think that's part of my success too. Is flipping my mind of I don't need don't need this. 
I can give it. And if I give enough, I'll get, I'll get back what I, what I, what I need. I mean, I already have what I need. Yeah. So I'll give what, what's important. So I just wanted to mention that. I, think I love that. Reminds me of Jim Rohn's quote where he said, don't bring your need to the marketplace, bring your seed, right? you bring the value that you want to deliver. Yeah. And uh, good old Ziggy Ziglar, right? He said, you can have anything you want in your life if you'll just help enough other people get what they want in their life. So it's that attitude of service, that attitude of I'm coming to bring value. I'm not coming to take, I'm not coming to be a lonely, I'm coming to serve. I'm coming to change your life if we're the right fit. Not everyone's the right fit. Not everyone's dialed into the right frequency. Not everyone's gonna be synergistically uh, aligned. You're not necessarily gonna have the right chemistry with everyone, but the mindset is if, you're, if we're the right fit, I'm gonna change your life. Yeah. <laughs> if, if you're committed and if we're aligned. So I love that. So here you are now, you're on the, literally on the brink of taking things to a million dollar trajectory. You close 20 loans in a month, that's a million dollar trajectory. And that's seven months after we got uh, hooked up and uh, after our paths crossed. Tell me about what's next for you. What are you most excited about? I mentioned, uh, I asked that question before, but let's just reconnect that for a moment. What are you most excited about in your life as you enter into this next level of expansion and growth in your business? Well, uh, I don't feel like I've arrived at all, okay? <laughs> so there's no arriving. Yeah, doing 10 loans a month for four months and you know, on trajectory for 20 in August. That's a good starting point for me. So my most exciting thing right now is is maintaining and growing from there, right? So once I make a million dollars profit, this isn't net, but profit in a year, that'll be sort of exciting for me, right? That'd be, that'd be like, oh, that, that's really neat. But honestly, that's not my end goal, right? So um, I don't even know what I'll do with a million bucks, you know, in a year. <laughs> I'm sure you'll figure it out. If you don't figure it out, your wife will. <laughs> I'll, I'll figure it out. I'm not a big boy guy. I, you know, I have six kids. They spend a ton of money and everything like that. But, you know, I, I don't have race cars on my wall. I don't have a million dollar house I need, um, but I don't like the feeling of, of, of lack either, right? So my main goal is to get rid of lack. I don't like feeling like I, I don't have enough or not feeling like what if it doesn't come in? I hate that feeling. So one thing cool right now is I have zero uh, feelings when I wake up in the morning of lack, mm. right? So I don't wake up in the morning and think, I hope I didn't make enough money next month because honestly, I already know what I'm making next month because I already know what deals are in next month. So I'm all, I love this business for that reason. I'm always a month out, right? I already know what's coming next month. It can just get better from there, right? So mm -hmm. I was like that in my last business. It was a day-to-day -day grind, like go out and sell an alarm today, get paid tomorrow. Every day, is, every day just sort of just, just happened. Now you get some consistency. You sort of know where you're going to end up, right? But with this one, I know where I, I am next month already. And that's only one month out. I don't know where I am the next month after that, okay? <laughs> Who knows? Right. Back filling it. Right. But I like that about this business. So I don't wake up with lack. Um, I'm excited about that. I wake up with with abundance. Hey, like, hey, I know what I have to do. What else can I do to get more of what I have? You know, I'm not I'm sort of a mellow guy. I'm not that excitable about 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 success in general. I just feel it's my like you said, I feel it's my birthright. And I feel like I, I don't like the lack. <laughs> so my yeah. gut's sort of a feeling of wanting to feel abundance in my life you know, and provide well for my family. Uh, but I, so I'm super excited about that feeling. And uh, I don't know what the next step is. I'm a single uh, single man shop right now, brother. I, I don't have any loan processors. I don't have anyone working for me. I process all my own loans. Um, I used to run a company with like 30 employees and I I, I don't know where, where I, if I want to get back to that kind of kind of grind. And I, uh, I have a goal to make a million dollars net profit with with just me and, and just me running my own thing. And I think I can get there within a year. And then after that, I probably should expand a little bit and get some help, you know, after that, probably <laughs> something like that. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's one of the things we were talking about uh, through Facebook messenger the other day is, you know, you can have it exactly the way you want it if you don't settle and you just choose a business model and a structure that serves your purpose and dials into the kind of fun fulfillment and freedom you want for yourself and your life and your family. So, You've got uh, lots of opportunity. There's no shortage of opportunity for you right now. You've got big mo has come to town, big momentum. We just want to keep pouring gasoline on the fire, keep getting dialed into that frequency of abundance, having that attitude of gratitude and that m magical morning routine and keep expanding and growing. And uh, brother, you're just scratching the surface of the surface. You haven't seen nothing yet. You're just getting warmed up. So super excited for you. As we wrap up this uh this interview, 
I'd like, just like to pivot for a moment and speak to the person who was you seven and a half months ago. They're perhaps in a similar boat as you in many respects. They're struggling, banging their head against the wall. Uh, they're worried where their next deal is going to come from. They're waking up in lack. They're going to bed in lack. Um, they're freaked out about how they're going to be paying the bills. And um, the future doesn't look altogether bright except for in their optimism. But on a day-to-day, -day, they're, they're in the grind and what they're doing ain't working, at least not at the level they want it to. And they're considering after listening to your interview, this possibility of hmm, maybe I should reach out for one of these breakthrough calls. Maybe I should look into learning more. What would you say to someone like that? Who's like, okay. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm open. I'm interested, but I mean, frankly, I've seen a lot of programs out there. I've invested in programs. Most of them are crap. Most of them were a complete waste of time and money. Although I did learn some stuff, but when it comes to real results that matter, it didn't really help that much. Uh, what would you say to someone like that who's considering um, reaching out to do a breakthrough call, but still kind of on the fence? Um, first off, you need to, if you're thinking that way, you're, you're, you're already thinking in, a, in an attitude of lack um, and uncommitted to yourself. Um, I would, this might, this might not be welcomed by most, but if most programs you've had, if you've been unsuccessful at them, 90% um, of it was probably your fault. Okay. That's how I feel. It's the programs I've taken that I haven't done much with. 90% of the, the problem was me, not the program. Okay. Mm. Uh, your program was different, Doran, than any other program I did. You taught a lot of the same, same, same message, but you have so much more to offer in way of mindset change for me that it changed my, it changed my life. And that mm. side of it. And some other, and some other technicalities too. Okay. So what I will say uh, as a, as a finish there for your question is, Start believing in yourself. If you don't do it, where will you be in six months? Mm. Do it. Where could you be in six months? Okay. Which one do you like better? And just make the choice. Which one do you like better? Where you could be or where you where you might be if you don't do not do anything. You're not gonna get anywhere if you don't do something. Doing something is better. And I will tell you, like your mindset program has changed changed the way I changed the way I think in it. It's, it's not that it was an original idea from you, Doran. I don't believe it, man. Um, you know, or anything like that. It's things that you've learned that you can share. And that's the beauty of it. We can share. So I would say it, it's no risk. You don't even have to think, take a risk. Just, just do it. Just do it and make it happen. And you'll find success. You won't find success from Doran's program if you're not willing to do something with it. So sign up for it and waste it. You know, you got to do it. You got to do what they say. So that's what I would say. Well said. Well said. That's from someone who's in the trenches every day, just like you guys, uh, who's had the highs and the lows, who's gone through many of the same fears and cha challenges, trials and tribulations as many of you, if not all of you. And uh, that's one of the reasons why we do these interviews, because it's one thing to just listen to Doran blabber and talk about, you know, different stuff that obviously you need to hear. But after a while, it's easy to start to say, ah, Doran, he just likes to talk about stuff because he doesn't actually do it himself. He just likes to talk theory. No, this stuff actually works when you work it. And this is a perfect case in point. So, Jed, I just really appreciate who you are. I want to honor who you are, um, not just as a business professional. You've been exceedingly successful, but you're just scratching the surface of the surface. I want to honor who you are as a man of God, as a father, as a husband, as someone who takes extreme ownership for his life and doesn't point the fingers anyone else but the person he sees in the mirror and you give yourself grace when you mess up but you also man up warrior up champion up and pull your bootstrap up and say hey if it is to be it's up to me so i just honor you for that i appreciate you for that it's been a delight to be on the journey with you to be uh perhaps a little spark in catching you on fire to your dreams and goals and i know you've just begun my friends so can't wait to see how high you soar as you continue to uh, fulfill your calling and to continue to grow in all that you're called to be. So super proud of you, brother. Keep up the great work. I appreciate it, Jordan. Thank you so much, Jim. All right, you guys, we've been with the one and only Jed Barker, and we just peeled back the curtain to reveal some of the distinctions and the story behind Jed's uh, journey over the last uh, seven months as he literally 5X'd his business and beyond in literally two months 
And uh, he just continues to climb higher and higher as he's utilized these systems, tools, mindset, and so on to help him really step into his fullness of what he's capable of. And you guys can do the same thing. Obviously, there are no guarantees. The only guarantee in life is death and taxes. Everything else is a sales pitch. So we're not saying there's any guarantees that you're going to get the same results as him. What we are saying is the system works when you work it, just like push-ups. If you do your push-ups, you're going to get stronger. If you sit on the couch eating bonbons watching Oprah, you're going to get fatter and weaker. Same thing here. If you do what you've always been doing, you're going to keep getting what you've been getting. If you do the, the system, the system will work for you. So that being said, if you're listening to this, watching this, and you're like, okay, this looks like it's got some substance. This is You can't make this kind of stuff up. This is the real deal. Uh, and we've got plenty of these interviews. This is just one of many. And you're wanting to be one of these success stories. You're done with being on the sidelines. You're done with mediocrity. You're done with the struggle. You're done with the stress. You're done with the sleepless nights. You're sick and tired of being sick and tired of living in lack. If that's you and you're ready to step it up into your power and start working smart instead of just working hard, I invite you to take advantage of the same breakthrough call that Jed took seven months ago that set him on a journey to go stratospheric and to step into abundance. And all you need to do to do that is book a call by going to mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Again, that's mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. We'll have an honest conversation about where you're at now in your business. Where do you want to be in your business? If it looks like we can help you and we're the right fit to get you to where you want to be, we'll show you what that looks like. If not, frankly, we'll be the very first people to advise you to pass on our services, perhaps recommend something else or someone else. Either way, though, here's what you will absolutely know to be true. You will leave the call with more clarity than you've ever had before on what it really takes to create a breakthrough in your business. And chances are we'll have some fun as well. So if that sounds good to you, with which it definitely should, I invite you to book the call right here, right now. Strike while the iron is hot. Mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. And it very well may be the turning point that changed your life forever.